You guys ready? Okay. You know I used to work here, right? Cool. Okay, this is Proto Labs Company Breakdown, Episode 1, Take 1. So guess what company we're breaking down today? Good guess. One way or another, you know Disney when you see it. Hear it. Even taste it. But what does the business side of this $71 billion per year company look like? I mean, how do they really make all that money? Well, it all goes back to Walt Disney's original vision of an endlessly spinning wheel that revolves faster and faster, churning out movies, ticket sales, products, and profits. He called the Disney flywheel. All Disney assets feed into each other and strengthen Disney's connection with its customers. Disney characters drive new original content across movies, TV, and streaming, which drives new worlds in its theme parks, which drive merchandise sales, which drives more content. It's a self-supporting cinematic universe bolstered by a global cast of 200,000 plus employees, Disney calls cast members. What didn't I do at Disney? <laughs> yeah. uh, I was cast as a as an MC for uh, a lot of the shows that they were doing at the Disney MGM Studios. Oh my gosh, I had so many jobs. I was a well costume character. I was a face character for a while. You're looking at a bell, friends. The monster sound show. I was the person that did the Disney fairy tale weddings, and would like the bride that would like come out of the big pumpkin just like Cinderella. And then there was a groom, and then we danced in the ballroom that Belle dances in. That's like real. First job was work at the Walt Disney Company, strategic planning. Michael Asher was the CEO at the time, and you know I was responsible for really focusing on the theme park expansion globally, and that's where, where I cut my teeth. All right, let's dive right in. The Walt Disney Company is divided into four business segments. Media networks. This is revenue from Disney-owned networks and TV shows. Parks, experiences, and products. Yep, as in, I'm going to Disney World. Studio entertainment. This is revenue from Disney films and direct-to-consumer and international, or DTCI. Let's start with Media Networks, one of Disney's largest divisions in terms of revenue, contributing $25 billion, or 35% of Disney's revenues, in 2019. This segment includes ABC, plus domestic cable networks such as Disney and ESPN, all TV production and distribution operations, and 50% equity stake in A&E. So Media Networks makes money in three key ways. Affiliate fees. That's when your cable company pays to carry Disney TV channels. Advertising. Disney sells ad space on its channels like ESPN. And subscription video on demand, or SVOD for short. Streaming platforms license Disney content to provide to their subscribers. Are you getting all this? Let's have Renee give us an example of how SVOD works. It goes like this. I really like Britney Spears, so I want to watch episodes of the Mickey Mouse Club from 1993. I pay for Sling because I know it has the Disney Channel and I can see Britney. Sling pays Disney to carry the Disney Channel. The Disney Channel airs ads that I'm forced to watch. Disney gets paid to air those ads, but they give a percentage of that money to Sling. As Bill Gates once said, content is king. And that's why Disney has invested heavily in its content and content acquisitions. Next up, Disney's Parks, Experiences, and Products Division. Back in 2019, this segment generated $26 billion, accounting for 37% of Disney's revenue, making it the largest revenue generator for the company. The Parks section includes six resorts around the globe. Parks, in many cases, it ends up being sort of the crown jewel because it is the physical world where in its living, breathing space, you know, the, the franchises, the the Pixar characters, the Marvel characters, the Star Wars, the classic Disney characters and stories are able to sort of live in a physical form. That ability to reinforce that content, you know, across geographies and cultures. And the experiences section includes Disney Cruise Lines, Disney Vacation Club, and National Geographic Expeditions. And then of course, we have consumer products, which is the licensing of Disney intellectual property and sales of branded merchandise. 
because absolutely everything is better when it has a Marvel character on it. Let's face it, this is not the worst thing you've caught me doing. Studio Entertainment has generally been the smallest division in terms of revenue, driving only 11 billion in 2019, or about 15% of total revenue. But it generates that valuable Disney content. And say it with me again, folks, content is king. Or these days, princess. Great storytelling is really why consumers flock to Disney. Without it, the flywheel stops spinning. Under Studio Entertainment's financial umbrella are Walt Disney Pictures, Marvel, Lucasfilm, and Pixar. Plus all of their physical studios, post-production, and music production services. In the case of Pixar, we thought not only could we help distribute their movies, we also thought that having Pixar and their creative team involved with Disney feature animation could kind of recapture some of that magic. And then ultimately Frozen recaptured the magic of The Lion King. This segment claims revenues from theatrical distribution, aka movie ticket sales, sales of home entertainment content, DVDs, Blu-ray, and digital rentals, and licensing of Disney films for TV and streaming platforms. Laserdisc turned into DVD, turned into Blu-ray, all right? I mean, I, I have now collected every single piece of live action and animation that Disney has ever uh, produced. Last but certainly not least is Disney's newest division, direct-to-consumer and international. DTCI contributed $9 billion in 2019, which means it contributed about 13% of Disney's total revenue, although that's expected to grow substantially in the coming years. This division was formed with the launch of Disney+. Plus. It carries streaming platforms like Disney+, Plus, Disney+, Plus Hotstar, that's the international version of Disney+, Plus, ESPN+, Plus, and Hulu, along with Disney's international TV networks. The division generates revenue through subscription fees, affiliate fees, and advertising. It competes with platforms like Netflix and HBO Max in the US and other international platforms. The primary value of a direct-to-consumer platform like Disney Plus is that it cuts out all the middle players and sources its content from its own ecosystem of studios. This is the future for Disney, a tighter flywheel that can spin even faster. All right, now that we know how Disney generates revenue, let's take a quick look at how they're doing profit-wise. Looking at 2019, the Media Networks division generated 7.5 billion in operating profit, a 30% margin. Operating those affiliate and advertising fees comes with overhead costs associated with programming, production, rights acquisition, and management. The Studio Entertainment Division generated 2.7 billion operating profit in 2019, a 24% margin. There are meaningful costs to producing a movie and managing its distribution. Those Star Wars special effects are not cheap. The Parks, Experiences, and Products Division contributed 6.8 billion operating profit in 2019, a 26% margin. Operating physical parks and experiences requires a lot of upkeep and labor. It takes an army of people to put the magic in the Magic Kingdom. And finally, the direct-to-consumer and international division generated a $1.8 billion loss in 2019, a negative 19% margin. Just like starting a business, launching a new platform like Disney Plus is expensive. Until Disney reaches a higher volume of subscribers, this division will be negative. Luckily, Disney generates big profits from its other divisions, so it can invest in the future. Because Wall Street expects this division to grow big quickly, it is acceptable to run it at a loss for a while, as long as the top line keeps growing. It all comes down to subscriber count. All right, so that's a Pareto Labs company breakdown on Disney. For more business breakdowns, skills you can use at work, and wisdom from top executives and entrepreneurs, Subscribe to Pareto Labs today and stay informed of Disney's progress because in a world where content is king, we think Disney is the royal family. <laughs>